There is a common and understandable fear that many of us share deep down, surrounding the idea of dying without being recognized or remembered. Perhaps we just want our loved ones to know us, while others may strive for recognition worldwide and desire a spotlight in history. But in some cases, the loss of identity among the deceased cannot be avoided. Whether it's the lack of a face, a deep state of composition, or the removal of hands and thus fingertips, it can be hard sometimes to track down the true identity of some of the departed. In this video, we'll be exploring the unsolved cases of three Jane and John Doe's whose severed heads are either missing or the only remaining body parts left to identify them. the 2018 Texas and Louisiana Jane Doe's. Some of the most disturbing, unidentified cases to come out of the United States in 2018 were the cases of the Texas and Louisiana Jane Doe's that prompted fears of an unknown serial killer prowling around the two states. On March 1st, a prison inmate doing cleanup labor in Louisiana found the head of a woman in a grassy marsh next to Highway 27 in Cameron Parish. The head was of a Caucasian female with reddish hair and was found in a plastic bag. According to experts, the head had been there for a few months, but certainly not years, and they later narrowed down the time of death to one to six weeks before the discovery was made. In June of that same year, Louisiana police released a facial construction of Jane Doe. She was estimated to be between 30 and 50 years of age, was white or Hispanic, and had medium length reddish brown hair. Her DNA could not be matched to anyone on record. Jane showed no signs of trauma to the head and she had extensive dental work, implying that she'd been looking after herself or being taken care of prior to death. Just a few weeks after the first victim was uncovered on March 24th in Huffman, the discovery was made of another female head, also Caucasian with reddish hair, by a volunteer cleanup crew near Lake Houston. They also updated the case in June, where a sketch of the victim was released. They disclosed details of Jane Doe, such as describing her top and bottom teeth as winged or slightly rotated. She likely had naturally dark hair as several inches of dark roots were coming through at the time of her discovery and her eyes were light to dark brown. It was also found that her eyebrows and eyeliner had been semi or permanently tattooed on and that her head had been in the grass for about a week. She had also been wrapped in plastic bags. One suspect in the case of both women was a man seen by witnesses throwing a plastic bag over a bridge where the head of the Lake Houston victim was later found below. He'd been spotted in the area several weeks before the first discovery was made and had gotten out the passenger side of a bluish green extended cab truck. The truck was described as being rusted and had been in several wrecks with cardboard covering the missing back left passenger window. The man is described as being Caucasian, early to mid twenties, with short, dark brown hair and a long fringe. He is around five foot four to five foot eight and was spotted around early to mid March, about 2.30 to 3 p.m., throwing the plastic bag. A criminal investigative psychologist believes it's the same person who committed both of these crimes and is familiar with both areas. They also suspect that the murderer has killed before and likely has a criminal record, including domestic violence and drug and alcohol abuse. Little progress has been made in the cases of the 2018 Texas and Louisiana Jane Doe's and they both 
to this day remain unidentified. John Valentine Hope Doe. On February 5th, 2005, a 47-year-old woman out walking her dog stumbled across a gruesome sight that would continue to haunt her for years to come. Cecilia Davis, who worked as a nurse, discovered the body of a young boy, later dubbed John Valentine Hope Doe. At first, thinking it was a seal, she walked closer and was startled to find the headless body of a child, later thought to have been between three and five years old. John Doe had been dumped in the water and washed ashore on a sandy stretch of Rockaway Beach in Queens, New York. He was thought to be either Hispanic or Caucasian and had been wrapped up in a blanket whose fabric was printed with Disney characters, including Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck, as well as letters of the alphabet. Little distinguishing information could be found on the blanket given that it was mass-produced through the 1970s and 80s. Later examinations told investigators that John had suffered injuries such as a damaged spine and injury to his ribs, and police speculated that he had likely been forced inside of a bag and this had resulted in the wounds. They also believed he had been tossed into the water as a means of disposal and that John's head had come away as a consequence of remaining in the water for a long time, rather than from a purposeful decapitation. The coroner ruled the death as homicide, but it couldn't be determined what exactly the cause of death was, likely due to the decomposed state of the body. While police knew how difficult it would be to crack the case, they set up a valiant effort nonetheless checking the National Missing Persons database for any leads and appealing to the public by distributing flyers. Still, no answers came in the case of John Valentine Hope. On May 21st, 2005, John was laid to rest. His funeral service was attended by some 200 people and was funded by both the police and the Children of Hope Foundation, who legally adopted John's body and gave him the name he was buried with. He was laid to rest in the cemetery of Holy Rudd in Westbury, New York, where a triangular, glass-covered area called the Island of Hope lies. The Island of Hope is owned by the Children of Hope Foundation and is home to abandoned and nameless babies and children. Cecilia Davis, who discovered the body of John Valentine Hope, attended the funeral. She later passed away from cancer, and her sister told of how Cecilia never forgot about the little boy she found. Unable to have children herself, Cecilia would say, how could someone be so cruel to throw away a baby like that when there's people around who can't have a child? There are a million people who would take that baby. Today, police are no further forward in identifying John Valentine Hope Doe. He, his family, and his killer remain nameless. The 2018 Halloween Doe While Halloween is meant to be a night of fun, spooks and scares, it's not meant to invoke any true, real-life tragedy. A head, discovered in October of 2018, was actually thought to be a prank by police initially, before they saw the head for themselves and realised what had been found was something straight out of a horror film. The decaying human head was found in the backyard of an apartment complex in Oakland, San Francisco. The visiting couple who discovered it rushed it to the local police department, who were fully prepared for some sort of pretend skull. When they laid eyes on the severed head, however, they suddenly understood that this was no prank. The head had been lying in amongst a few trees in the grassless backyard of the complex, and had previously not been spotted by residents. The residents were later interviewed and dismissed as suspects from the case. It's unclear how the head became separated from the body. It may have been intentional, but investigators have suggested that it could have been moved by an animal, having naturally fallen off as a result of decomposition. The skull itself, described as having a little bit of flesh to it by authorities, did not show any signs of trauma or foul play but this does not rule out murder as an option. It's unclear 
how long the head had remained in the yard. As of Halloween, authorities began looking to see if the head was connected to an almost mummified, decapitated body of a man found in close proximity that September. But there appears to be no new updates to confirm whether or not the two are of the same person. Local deputies speculate that the head and or body were from a transient. It may be that they died from natural causes, and as theorized previously, the head was moved by animals. The head and body were found in similar states of decomposition, which prompted authorities to speculate the link between the two. But as of 2020, this link has not been confirmed. And still, the head and body each remain unidentified. And there you have the facts. Please leave a comment down below with your own theories and speculations. And remember to like this video and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you for watching. Stay alert, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.